Hello everyone and welcome to episode 76 of the Cherry Heart Podcast. I'm Sandra and I have my co-host here today with me, Bertie, the miniature dash hound and general pain in the bum. Um, yes, <laughs> uh, so this is a crafty podcast, that's what I was going to say, uh, featuring crochet and knitting mainly, some sewing and any other crafty bits and bobs I may get up to. Um, you will be able to find the show notes for this podcast on my blog which is cherryheart.co.uk and you can just click the podcast tab at the top to find the latest show notes so that's where I'll put any links for anything I talk about and pop some more pictures and things so if there's anything you want to know you should be able to find the answer there Um, and I shall also pop it in the little down bar below so if you're watching on YouTube you can just use the link below um, I think that's all the intro gumph out the way. Welcome. Uh, welcome back if you are a returning viewer and uh, welcome and hello if it's your first time. I hope you enjoy it. Getting try to get his head into it. Um, yes, I hope you enjoy uh, this little podcast of mine. Um, I'm going to start by talking just a little bit about my Nature's Walk blanket which is a crochet along that I'm hosting at the moment together with Black Sheep Wools. Um, We're on week three at the moment, week three of the crochet along Um, and Buds is the square pattern which is just that one there, that pink one there. that's the pattern for this week. So yes, uh, thank you so, so much for everyone that's joining in and sharing all your pictures. It's so lovely to see them all coming through and I've been trying to share them on my stories as well. And yeah, it's just really nice to see it coming to life when other people make it, you know, just sort of, I never get over that element of designing a pattern and then someone else makes it and it make and it looks how it's supposed to. I still I still can't get over that all this all this time I've been doing it, but I still can't get over that element of it. Yeah, so thank you for that, everyone. Um and thanks for sharing them and I hope you continue to enjoy it. I've had some lovely comments, so thank you very much for that. Um what was my other reason for mentioning it? Oh well just um if you don't know anything about it, by the way, and you're interested in joining the work joining in because we're only on week three it's eight weeks long so and a lot of people are just taking it at their own pace anyway to be fair so yes if you are still interested in joining I did a um a video a special nature's walk special it's a couple of episodes back so you can have a look and find out more about it there or just pop along back to the blog uh cherryheart.co.uk and it's there's a big banner so you can't miss it so that has all the information on and um, the other thing I was going to tell you about, that was it. I'm going up to Black Sheep Wools again. Um, I went up at the beginning of the crochet along before we started and we had a little launch party. Um, so that was quite nice. So I took all the blankets up and I went up and spent the day at Black Sheep Wools. Um, but we're going to have another day. Um, this is something we've done with our previous crochet alongs as well. A little sort of nature's walk meet up. Um, so yes, I wish you'll be at Black Sheep Wolves again on the 17th of October. So we're having a little meet up there. So I'll be there all day. So in the morning it's just a kind of more casual thing, a bit of a meet up. I'll just be in the shop. That's from 10 till 12. Um, so I shall be about in the shop and um, we can just have a little chat and uh, mingle there, have a little meet up. And then in the afternoon, we're going to do an afternoon tea. So that's from one to three. Um, that's a little bit more, um, well, I was going to say formal. It's not going to be formal, but I just mean it's a ticketed event. So um, because it's actually an afternoon tea, you know, with sandwiches and cakes and lovely teas and things um, to enjoy there is actually a charge for that one so you do have to book in if you want to come to that one so that's in the afternoon from one till three so then we'll get to sort of sit down and have some crochet time together and enjoy some lovely goodies as well so that would be quite nice so I'm really looking forward to that so that's 17th which is it's next week now isn't it oh my goodness um 
yes yeah, so i wanted to say about that so you had a chance to um pop that little date in your diary if you are close enough to go i know a lot of you won't be close enough to go to black sheep walls they're up in cheshire it's quite a way for me as well actually but um yeah well worth the trip if it's um a manageable distance for you so yeah i shall hope to see you there if you can go that would be fab and uh see how you're all getting on with your blankets and uh, yeah we can have some nature's walk chat um, so that was the first thing I wanted to talk about um, I think that's all the sort of podmin you know things to say and now I can talk about what I've been up to since we last spoke um, I was due to podcast last week I think I normally do every other week so last week would have been my every other week um but like I say I had living room stuff and I was painting 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 most of the time last week so in theory I should have more to show you today shouldn't I but I'm not sure I have what have we seen there's a bird going by um yeah so now I shall attempt to show you what I've been up to with a with a hound on me Ooh. So the first thing is just a little bit, a little uh, project even. This is a finished thing, so this is what I have done. Um, I'm just getting them off to sort of show you a few of them. So it's these rather lovely little dishcloths. Well, I say I finished them, I haven't actually blocked them yet, which obviously I wouldn't worry about if I was just going to use them. I'd just get on and use them, but... I've actually, when I'm, I made these, I made a couple of these before with just some random cotton that I had and I quite like this pattern design, this stitch pattern um, and a few people asked me about it so I've actually made some more and I've written up notes this time so I can actually sort out a pattern for you. So yeah, so I've made a few different colours. I chose these lovely cottons, oh, that's when I was at um, Black Sheep Wools for the launch party actually and they very kindly gifted me these so thank you girls um, yeah so I picked these colours out and I've made a nice little selection of these dishcloths I'm going to call them pinecone dishcloths I think because this sort of pattern reminds me of the sort of um, you know when the pine cones are all folded up for some reason <laughs> Yeah, so I'm just going to block them to get them to lay flat so I can get a nice picture to show you. But yeah, so I've whipped all those up. And then I've... So to make these, let me show you what I'm using. You can use any 100% cotton, really. Um, but I'm using these little balls. That's all shiny, so it's going to be hard to see, isn't it? Not sure that's helping. Um, Rico, thereby. So it's Rico Rumi, um, and they're double knit, 100% cotton, but they're little 25 gram balls. So they're just a really nice mini size to make something quite small out of. So um, out of each ball, I've made um, a little dish cloth, and I've also made three of these little face puffs, which are for washing the face. So I, um, you could use these as a flannel, you see, I think you could use these as a sort of little shower mitt thing because it's got this nice textured side, so you'd have a bit of an exfoliating type thing, wouldn't you? And this is the other side, which I also really quite like, actually. Um, but it's a bit smoother. So if you wanted to use it as a dishcloth, you've sort of got a smoother side and a kind of rougher side for getting you know, more stubborn bits off. But actually, I think it would work nicely as a flannel because you've got a nice smooth side, but you could tell it sort of have a more exfoliating side. So that kind of works quite well. But yes, um, so these little face puffs, I got three of those out of them. Um, out of those tiny little balls. So I thought that was quite a nice amount. Um, and then I did try, I made a slightly bigger one to use up a whole ball just to see how big it would go. Let's just show you them. So you could just make a bigger cloth if you wanted to. 
Or get bigger balls and make an even bigger clock, I suppose. But I just quite like that because it's sort of like a nice hand size, so it sort of sits on your hand and it's nice to scrub with. <laughs> Rub it up, up with. Yes, anyway. <laughs> so I thought these would be rather nice little presents. Um, sort of something like this and the little puffs with it and some nice soap, you know, some nice naturally made soap. I thought could look really lovely with these. So yes, so I wanted to get the pattern up quite quickly for you. So if you like the idea, sort of as a little gift idea as well, you could do that if you wanted to. So I'm writing those up, but like I say, um, I just want to block them. That's what I was going to say, wasn't I? Um, just going to block them to take a nice picture and then I'll probably get that pattern out quite soon. So yes, yeah, so they're a nice little make. You can sort of whip one of those up in an evening quite nicely. So that was fun to do. I might make a few more as well because I want to keep some myself and I'll perhaps give some away. Um, what else have I done? I don't think I've actually finished. Well, sort of. I'll do this actually because this is a half finish. So this is my Strictly Socks. So Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful is having a Strictly Sock Along this year, which is where you knit socks while you're watching episodes of Strictly Come Dancing or Dancing with the Stars if you're in America. Um, well, I say it's while you're watching it. I, I think sort of some creative cheating is positively encouraged. So you can knit it while you're watching Strictly or uh, It Takes Two, the little spin-off show, but I'm sure you can find other creative ways to uh, have a Strictly related knitting time. Anyway, this is my first sock, my one sock. I have to do the other one yet, to gotta cast that on. Um, yes. But I have finished one, which considering we're only on well, we had week three now, so the launch show and week three. And there's been some, see, I've been watching some take twos. And so I've been getting some extra time. So yes, I've finished this really quickly, it feels like, compared to other years. So who knows, I might even get two pairs in this year. But yes, so the yarn is uh, Lay Family Yarns, and it was a sock set. So this is the main, and that's my little mini. I think it's called Apple Blossom because um, it's got little, little tiny lovely flecks in it. And the pattern that I am using is from Ellie of Craft House Magic and it's her Country Garden Socks pattern I think. I'll pop it down here if I'm wrong, I think that's right though. Um, but I did actually forget to put the trellis bit on so she has I believe I followed the pattern apart from there's another stitch pattern at the top here called trellis. This is called butterflies, this main bit. And I forgot to put it in. And then I was going to add it in the bottom. And of course I didn't. I sailed merrily away knitting and forgotten. But I did get the heel in. I did remember to do that. So she's got a clever little stitch pattern on the heel so it looks like some grass. Which I'm totally failing to show you. There you go, look. So there's all sort of different lengths of stitches coming up to look like grass, which is quite cute. Um, yeah, so that's a really pretty, nice, easy pattern to do. And yeah, very happy with that. So one down and one more to go on those. I was just thinking of how I could incorporate the trellis, but now I've forgotten to put it at the top and then forgot to put it at the bottom as well. don't really want to put it on the other socks so they're not the same. I'll just have to remake the pattern and do it properly next time. Um, yeah, so that's those. So I'm chucking along nicely. And then, sorry, I'm just looking around to see what I have to talk about. This. My bag of blobs. Oh, I've got another done. Ah, that's my other done. We'll go to that next. So in here, 
I have, well let me see if I can show you. I have lots of these little granny starts. So I've showed you these before that I was making them. I think last time I was kind of halfway through or just over halfway. And now I've finished. I've made all the ones that I still need. So that's 513 little tiny granny middles that I've made. Granny seedlings. Someone said it was uh, Joan, I think, on Facebook said. Oh, they're like little granny seedlings, which I love that idea. Because I said to someone else, ah, oh, well, from these tiny little acorns, mighty oaks shall grow because it's going to become a blanket. She said, oh, they're like little granny square seedlings. I don't know why I keep picking you up to show you. But anyway, yes, a whole bag full of them I've made. I'm so <laughs> ridiculously pleased with myself for having accomplished that task. Um, which is why they're still sitting in this bag and I haven't moved them on to the next stage yet. Once I'd finished all these ones and woven all the ends in, I was like, so, ta-da! It felt like such an accomplishment that I haven't actually managed to move on yet. But what it will become is a blanket like this. So these are my little middles. Next I've got to put another round on and then I'm joining them all in with this last, with the third round, doing a continuous join. So I've got my wool to carry on my continuous joining once I've got some more squares ready. Um, and I'll add them all into the blanket. So I started this earlier this year and my plan was to take sort of a couple of years to finish it. Um, which I might do. But to be honest, once all the squares are made up, I might just crack on and get it joined. Although I've still got the border to do. Yeah, so this has been the first year of it. Not quite at the end of the year yet, are we? Um, and then I'll finish it next year, I think, at some point. But yes, I'm very pleased with my little dots. Now I've hoarded them for a little while and shown you, I might be able to contemplate doing some more on them and taking them to the next stage. But yeah. Yeah. They're fun to play with and tip out and spill everywhere and... I don't know. It's just a nice thing to have for some reason. Lots and lots of these tiny little crocheted dots. I don't know why. I can't explain it. It's probably just me. It's like crochet piles, you know, when you make squares and you stack them up. Oh, I love it. It's kind of here in that spot, I think. Um, Right. So I was going to talk about that next, wasn't I? So that's the other thing I've actually finished. Um, I finished it a little while ago, so that is my Quite Contrary shawl, which is an older pattern of mine. I made it quite a few years ago in a double knit yarn. I will get it in a minute. It's just the dog's gone to sleep on me now and it means disturbing him. But um, Yeah, so I made it originally in a double knit yarn. Really happy with it, really liked it. It's kind of like a wide scarf or more of a wrap really. It's like a long rectangle shape. Um, yeah, so I was really happy with that, really happy with the dangly bits on it. And um, yeah, but just lately I was thinking, it was during summer actually, when I was making more lace weight things and just how nice it was to just have something little and light to just throw around on those slightly cooler days, but you know, not when it's cold obviously. So I thought this wrap of mine would look really nice in lace weight so I wanted to try it. So I did and I'm really quite happy with how it turned out. I'm gonna get it and show you now. But here we are, here it is. Um, so yeah these are the dangly bits I was speaking of. And uh, if I hold it out you can see hopefully. They are. It's just this really long rectangular shape. So um, I've made this um, and it's actually the same size as my double knit version came out. So because I was using lace weight I still wanted to use quite a big hook 
sort of to get a nice open light feel. So I used the same hook size that I used with my double knit yarn. And I thought it would probably still come out smaller, but when I, I suppose because I've blocked it, it kind of opens out nicely when you block it, doesn't it? But yeah, it's come out pretty much the same sort of size, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, I didn't sort of make it longer or adjust the pattern in any way. I thought I might have to add stitches and things, but or rows. But no, it's come out nicely to the same size, so yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I've said that before, I'm being repetitive. Um, but yeah, it's nice and easy sort of way to swap from a different yarn weight, I thought, which was quite pleasing. So I thought it might work quite well with um, four ply as well. You could probably do the same thing. I think it was a, I think it was a four mil hook that I used. Um, so yeah, I'm sure you could do that with fingering weight as well and have sort of an in-between couldn't you? Because it'd still block out nicely. So the yarn I used was some Drops Lace. I can't remember exactly what it's called. I think it's just called Drops Lace. I don't know if it had some other sort of yarn name. I'll pop it in, you know, it's all linked in my show notes if you do want to know. But yeah, I had it in my stash and it's been sat there for a while so I thought this would could, was a good thing to use it on. Um, Yes. Oh, and the other reason I wanted to remake it as well was because of my quite contrary... See, I'm not thinking of words today again, am I? My quite contrary shawl is, as I said, one of my older patterns and I wanted to... I thought it'd be quite a nice one to do a chart for. So I wanted to just go through it again and sort of um, refresh my memory on it all and uh, do a chart and, you know, sort of test that at the same time. So I've done that. So I've done a little pattern revamp and I've sort of I've just moved it over into a new format. So the basic pattern itself, if you've had it before, hasn't changed. I've just reformatted it into the new style that I have now. And yeah, I've added the chart to it as well. So if you have had the pattern before and you wanted to get the updated version, um you'll get an email with just a link so you can download the new version if you want to or it if you're on Ravelry it just goes to your library. So that's completely free to get any pattern update is always completely free. Um, but yeah if you like charts and that sort of you know sort of any interest to you now that you've seen the lovely lace version or the fact that charts might make a difference for you um, I shall be I shall be incoherent for you. I shall be getting the update on soon, that's what I wanted to say. So if you are interested in having it with the update, um, yeah, that will be available soon. Well, actually, you could buy it now anyway, because when the update comes on, you'll just get the update free, as I mentioned. So six of one and half a dozen of the other. But if you actually want to wait for the update, if that's what it hinges on for you to buy it, then it should be very soon. Maybe today maybe tomorrow but hopefully this week I'll pop that up I'll pop a link in here um, and then you'll know so if you're on YouTube I'll pop the link to it directly down there so you know but otherwise it'll be in my show notes so so there you go that has been done so I'm pleased to do that um, so it was quite um you know, it's one of my more popular patterns sort of a few years ago when I first released it. So it's quite nice to sort of do an update to it because it makes a nice um, wedding wrap. It's what a lot of people have used it for, either for an evening sort of a party or to go to a wedding or for a bridal sort of little gift for a wedding. So I've seen beautiful sort of um, double knit versions and people use lovely... Um, white yarns or ivory yarns or even with a bit of glitter in but just a light lace weight one or a fingering weight version could be really beautiful as well couldn't it especially for that sort of light kind of bridal you know to complement the dress uh yeah i think it could work really well in the sort of the lighter weight yarn as well so that was um part of the reason too 
Um, right, what else have I got to talk about incoherently? So I've done my socks, I've done the blanket, just this now then I think. So this is my cardigan project. And this is my So Sweet Violet bag, my happy, happy, happy bag. One of my treasured bags. And I am making a fluffy blob. It's an Elton cardigan, which is by Hokey Loke Telly. Just show you it there. There we go. That's it. And I don't know if you can see on the picture, but it's striping two different yarns. So it's a normal fingering weight yarn and then a mohair. You're making the blank uh, the desk move you. You're gonna go and sit down, are you? Go on then, off you pop. Um Yes, so I have two skeins of this and I have one of this, which is what the pattern in my size calls for. So it's quite nice that it doesn't take up too, too much yarn. Well, assuming I get it fits okay and I get the size I want. <laughs> um, I'm just going to let him out. But he'll probably want to come in again in about 20 seconds, but never mind. Um, yes, so what was they saying? Um... Yeah, so I have two of these, so that's fine. I've got enough of the yardage of those. But this one, I've only got one of these, which is what the pattern calls for, but the yarn that they've used in the pattern has got a lot more yardage than mine. So I might fall a bit short on this one. I don't know. Well, what I'm going to do is knit the body and do... Um, Oh, goodness me, if only I could remember. Um, and then maybe the sleeves. I might not have enough to do the striping on the sleeves is what I was going to say. So I'll knit the body and I'll do the button band and everything. So I know that's all fine. And then I will use see how what my hair left. I've got to do striping on the sleeves. I might have to just do the sleeves in the uh, fingering weight. So we shall see how that goes. And this is what I have so far, which I shall try and show you, but it's sort of quite light and airy, as you can imagine, with all this mohair in it. So it's kind of hard for it to sort of take a nice shape. <laughs> yes, that's very clear, isn't it? What I've actually got, so this is a top down. So these are the shoulders here, either side and the back and the front and I've just joined for the sleeve, for under the sleeve. So there's my little sleeve holes. Um, yeah, so there we go. So now I've just got lots and lots of rows to get the length on the body to go. So I've got a nice long mindless bit to deal with. Um, and this is my second one. I had a bit of a false start on this one. The gauge for this, I personally think, seems a bit crazy. Um, so this is fingering weight yarn we're using. And the gauge she's given for the body, this is, not the sleeves, but for the body, is 20.5 stitches by 36 rows. And here he is on end coming again. Right, he's back, and of course he can't sit in his bed. It's probably because it's the blankets, because it stays up here. It's probably got a bit cold, and the heat is on. It's nice and warm here now, but it takes a while to sort of get into things, doesn't it, to warm them through. Um, yes. Anyway, what was, I was talking about gauge. So stitches twenty point five, which is, I mean, there's a margin of error with these things, isn't there? There's like a you know, it's not just one figure, but roughly that's kind of like an Aran weight kind of gauge. And then the rows, 36 rows, that's roughly a fingering weight gauge. So I'm not quite sure how you're supposed to get all of those rows in and get the stitches that wide apart. That's a little odd. So I can only assume that you kind of head somewhere in the middle, get roughly a 
double knit gauge and then stretch it out wide so that your stitches stretch out and your rows bunch up that's all I can assume because it's this is gauge is given for after blocking so I tried that well I made it first of all I sort of made it to try and fit that gauge and I was using a lot bigger needle to try and get that stitch gauge I didn't really notice the row gauge at first to be fair And I just wasn't happy with how it looked. It just looked messy and horrible. The fabric and even and the blocking was just no, not good. So then I went down and then I noticed the thing with the rows and I thought, okay, it is obviously supposed to be smaller then and you just stretch the <laughs> stretch the heck out of it. Um so I've gone down a needle size, so I'm still a bigger needle size than the pattern says. Um I just have to stretch. If I um, if I use what it says in the pattern, I can get gauge on the rows, no problem. But then the stitches, you just have to stretch it so much. I just, I personally don't like how it looks. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. I don't know. But I don't like how that looks. And maybe I'm interpreting the whole thing wrong. I don't really know. But that I'm just sort of. That's the best I can make of it. That's what I think. Um, yeah, so I've sort of hit, I've sort of gone between those two. As I said, I was aiming for between those two numbers, and then when I block it, I'll perhaps stretch it slightly widthways to get it a little bit wider stitches. But to be honest, if I stretch it so I get twenty point five stitches, I just don't like how that looks. Um, yeah. So anyway, I restarted on my smaller needle size and I'm happier with how it looks now. It's still a big needle size for fingering weight yarn. And obviously the mohair, because it's fluffy, it actually looks even thinner than fingering weight. I think with the fluff it kind of works out so that it knits up at the same amount. I don't even know if you can see. Sort of the core of it is a lot thinner, but you have to take the fluff into account, don't you? Anyway, to count a long rambling story short, this is what I'm getting now. So it's still really quite open, but it's a lot better than it was. And I think once I've blocked it, it will be okay. Um, and it's also a, there's a lot of positive ease on it. So I'm making the size recommended with the positive ease recommended for me. I haven't gone up a size because I, I just don't think I'll have enough yarn. So I might end up with a bit less positive ease at the end than the pattern says because I'm probably not going to quite get gauge. But I'm alright with that. I think that'll be fine. And funnily enough the sleeve gauge is really quite different. 25 stitches and she's made the point that she's knit one on the flat and one on the round which is fine I can see that that does make a difference when you knit flat you knit and then you purl and when you knit in the round you just do knit stitches so that can affect your gauge I'm aware of that so that's fine but that's a that's not a bit different that's a lot different isn't it 25 yeah. stitches I don't know maybe I'm missing something maybe like if any of you guys out there have more experienced garment knitting and seen that before and know how to interpret that or what I'm supposed to do with it or you're aware you know the flat and round I mean it seems like a big difference to me maybe it isn't maybe you've come across that before and you're like oh yeah it can make a big difference I thought it would just make a bit of a difference but I don't know yeah, if anyone's got any tips or advice on that, that would be most appreciated. But, um, yeah, I think I've kind of made the best of it for now. We'll, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I'm really enjoying making garments because of this sort of learning proce process. I'm really enjoying that things aren't always quite that simple. And it's a, well, I say I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I am enjoying it, although sometimes it is also frustrating. But no, I like the sort of challenge of, you know, things are a bit more, okay, I've got to think about it a bit more and what does this mean? And, you know, each one you do learn things from, which I really like. 
And I also like that there's kind of, there'll be a bit you have to think about, like, oh, if you have to cast on in a certain way or do short rows or join here and there and do certain bits, pick up stitches maybe. But then you'll have nice bits of where it's just back and forth and nice and mindless. So there'll be like a thinking bit and then a, ah, just a relaxing bit and then another little thinking bit and then a relaxing bit. I like the, I like the mixture of it, it keeps it interesting. Yeah, so really enjoying my garment knitting at the moment. Um, what else do I have to talk about? I have got a sort of a proto project on the go actually, a potential project I'm going to tell you about because I haven't got any incoming goodies or anything um, to speak of. At least actually I have, but I left it down the house. I'll show you it when I use it. I've got a sweater quantity of yarn because um, I haven't got, I've got lots of yarn. I haven't got many in enough to make any jumpers or cardigans out of. I could do like a fade, a mix some, which is okay. Um, I'm not, a, I was going to say I'm not a huge fan of that. I sort of am because I have seen some gorgeous ones, but at the same time, it's not the idea that kind of appeals to me most at the moment. So. I have done it with a crochet jumper and I'll, I'll probably do it again. I've said that and then two seconds later I'm going, I'm doing a fade because, you know. But yes, that's not appealing to me at the moment, but I do like the idea of getting a few sort of choices of, you know, yarns in enough quantity to make a jumper or a cardigan out of. But obviously that's quite expensive, so can't do that every day of the week. But if you sort of save up and get one occasionally, that might be that might be quite nice, I thought. Anyway, that's by the by, because I'm now going to tell you about a blanket project that I want to do. So this is um, my mum's magazine. She gets this period living magazine, and whenever I go round there and I normally sit and flick through it and we have a bit of a chat about it or over a cup of tea, and while I was flicking through, I saw this picture with this blanket in. Let's see if I can get it nice and close. I'm not sure how clear that's coming out. Probably focuses better about there, doesn't it? Don't focus on me, focus on this. Um, yes, so it, as you can see, it's not like a huge picture. But I really like that blanket. It is a crocheted blanket. Um, yeah. I really like it. I've been wanting to make a blanket all in white for a little while. Um, yeah, it's kind of been on my to-do list. I'll tell you why I thought of it as well. It's because when we were doing the crochet along, so not this one, my first one, the Spice of Life crochet along, which I did quite a few years ago now, um, 2015 I think it was. Yeah, quite a lot of people, we had sort of a colour packs and I'd gone for my sort of usual thing, quite colourful, but some people had made it all in one colour because there's all different stitches in it, you see it's stripes and it's different stitches. And at first, when first someone said, oh I'm going to make mine all in cream or all in white or all in whatever, and I thought, oh right can't really see the point of that because you're not gonna you know you can't see the sort of different stripes is that but you know each to their own that's fine <laughs> anyway then they started posting pictures of these blankets and I was like oh my god you were so right it looks amazing and I loved how it looked it looked really good so yes hats off to those people that uh, realized that that would look good yeah so since then I've really kind of liked that idea and I th I have I've seen quite a few people doing quite a neutral version of this I haven't I've heard a couple of people saying they might do it all in one cover I haven't actually seen one yet but that might be because they're making the squares individually perhaps I won't see until they start to join together but yeah anyway when I saw this I thought maybe this could be my all-in-one all white blanket so it's kind of um, got like a fillet crochet type look to it. Um, 
yeah it's very hard to see the detail just on here perhaps I could put a picture in maybe that'll come up a bit clearer it's not incredibly clear um, I've got like I took a picture on my phone so I could kind of enlarge it but of course it just blurs when you enlarge it but you can kind of make some of the detail out anyway so I've been doing little samples to see if I can recreate it I'm getting on quite well actually so there's this which is I don't know if you'll be able to see so the main this bit here is a so more solid bit with little um, gaps on it and then there's a more lacy bit so the solid bit is actually that kind of design that's quite easy to I could see that okay and then this is the lacy bit so I'd seen how they this lacy bit I'd seen that done before so that's fine and there's actually another lacy bit that I've got on another sample that I didn't bring up that makes the in-between of these sort of more panelled bits so I think I've got the basic how the main blanket, I'm quite happy with how that works. And then there's the border. So this is my little sample for the border. So it has this kind of diamond motif and then there's two different ones. So there's one with these fillet stitches in and then there's one with more open work that's got these sort of, actually that's upside down. Um, this more sort of these little arches as I call them in. So yeah, so I'm happy with that as well. So I've got those two elements sussed, I think, or at least close enough. But now I've got to work out how to get the border on the blanket. So in the picture, I don't think you'll be able to see, so there is a corner on there hanging down nicely and I can see it. What they've actually done is just eased it round so they've got the border there and it just comes in, I can't show it up in here, but it, it gathers in tighter, these rows are all gathered in tightly and it kind of just eases round the corner like that. So it's not actually, they haven't actually changed the pattern. What it's like is they've made a ginormous long strip of this border and then have attached it to the blanket afterwards. They've gone up the straight edge and then they've kind of just gathered it in where the corners are to go round like that. That's what it looks like they've done. I'm pretty sure they've made it separately and added it on afterwards judging by this picture. I'm not sure I want to do that though, so I might figure out a way of getting this border to kind of turn the corner. I think that would possibly be easier. I've never done, I have seen it in patterns before where you make the border and then you apply it afterwards. I've never actually done it though. I've always sort of steered clear of it because if you're making one thing that goes that way and one thing that goes that way, getting them the same size could be a bit awkward. And then with this, where it has to go around the corner, I'm not sure I like the look of it. I'm not sure I like the idea of it even, so I don't know. I'll see, if I can't sort of devise a way to turn the corner nicely, maybe I'll have to try it. But yeah, I'm quite happy with my starting point on that. <laughs> Um, I did have a look in here, it doesn't say anything at all about this blanket in here, it doesn't say anything in, you know, it doesn't even say stylist zone in the description or the article at all. It does say, um, so this house is in, that doesn't tell you anything does it, this house that they have, this lovely little house is in Sweden, um, and it does say that she... Sarah, who owns the house, likes to buy bric-a-brac and old furniture and uh, flea market finds, things like that. She's a genius at flea market finds, it says. Oh no, Sarah's an expert at discovering second-hand and vintage gem at flea markets. Um, so I'm wondering if this is a vintage gem from a flea market. I suspect it might be. Because what I also suspect from the pictures is that these 
strips are actually made, this sort of panel is made like this and I think you then get another panel and the, the bit of lace that's between I think is actually a join. You can just about see in the picture and just the way the spacing is I think that's actually what's happened. So I think they've made lots of these panels, joined them to make a blanket, then made a whole load of this border and stitched it round. That's what I think has actually happened there. Could be wrong, obviously, because I'm trying to guess from a... trying to gather from a little photo, but that is what I think has happened. Um, yes, yeah, so I don't think there's much chance of ever finding a pattern for it, but if someone does recognise it and knows that it is a pattern, and knows who it is by, where I can get it, I would be most appreciative, of course. But yeah, I think, I don't think there's much hope of that. But definitely, please, please do let me know if you know of it or if you've seen it anywhere. Um, yes, so that's my kind of thing that I'm working on as well in the background. Um, I feel like there should be other things I should be saying to you. I think that'll do. I haven't got any vloggy bits to share today. Um, I still haven't done pod mail. I just haven't had the chance to look at them and think about it, I'm afraid. I'm so sorry. Such a bad podcaster. Um, what I might, might do, actually, I should do like a podcast special where I just answer pod mail questions. That would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, maybe that would be a thing and then I could kind of like think about it and focus on it instead of keep going oh no I must look at that later <laughs> um yeah it's just a busy patch at the moment sort of my September was busy October's going to be busy and then I think hopefully things should quieten down in November and then and then it's you know what at the end of the year so it'll probably go mad again but <laughs> never mind there's always time to fit in a bit of crochet that's the main thing as far as I'm concerned Right, I shall leave you now. Thank you ever so much for watching. Thank you for making it this far. Um, if you liked it and would like to subscribe, that would be fab, or press the thumbs up button, that would also be lovely. And I hope you find a few minutes for your crocheting too. Um, and I will see you next time. Bye. I'm being pulled down by the dog. Bye. <laughs>